Welcome to On The Chain. This is Chip, and that is Jeff, right, sitting right over there. Down with OTC. I'm, I think everyone's down. Even Moto Yoda's down with OTC. So we got a lot of things to talk about tonight, Jeff. First off, we've got, you know, Ripple's uh, putting a couple blog posts up there. We've got some new potential crypto legislation on the horizon. Maybe, could be, maybe. Legislation. There might be some or clarity. Yeah, my gosh, man, we've been talking to this about this since we're blue in the face, but that's what we have going, guys. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Let's do right it right now. Let's welcome. To on the chain with Jeff and Chip. Hello, everybody. Hello, fired everybody. Up. Who is fired up? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Amazing All human beings, you are. Crypto holders, you are. You Ronnie are. Side says, "What's up, Chip and Jeff? Ahoy from That's Canada. Right. Ahoy, mate. It's matey. Okay. Everybody, give a shout out where you guys are tuning in from." Definitely appreciate that. And let's One dig into old. this thing, man. Let's dig in because there's so much to cover. We've mm. got about this much time to do it in. And it goes real, real quick. So first things first. First things first, Jeff. I, I, I wanted to get to this. Let's just start this off. I'm about to do a little rant here, but but it's okay. Go. Start I might do up. a little bit of a rant let's here. Go. All right, let's let me. Uh, so Ripple put up a blog post today, and I thought, like, huh, what's this about? And the basic crux of it was Ripple Nets engineering inclusive language, and I go, huh, that's inclusive. interesting. Inclusive language. And it says, welcome back to the second post of this inclusive language blog series. Apparently, I, I, we missed part one, Jeff, but I didn't see part one. It says we contextualize the importance of eliminating terms with probl problematic and racist origins from our code base, such as master and slave, which has been around since the beginning of um, code, blacklist or whitelist. And then we suggested changing them equally clear and more agreeable words, such as primary and secondary and deny list and allow list. They scrubbed their entire code base to remove common terms in programming. Okay. What the hell is going on over at Ripple? I mean, don't they have partnerships to worry about or something like that? This is so the post is really long. They have this is a lot of work. I don't know if you realize how much work this is. First of all, they had to size up the problem. How deep and how long? How deep is it, right? And the so four there you categories. Go. Let's see. Yeah. What's so the sizing you, problem? Well, you, they have to size up the the issue. Like how how broad is it, and how do they how do they they basically grep across there so they can find all the stuff. Then they figure out how do they fix how do they replace the file names with the new words that they want to change like allow list deny list versus yeah. whitelist and blacklist no, right you know not to get into this this whole area of political correctness and politics but to undo all the common language and to do away with specific language you know it, it's i mean the the the, I mean, it's just chaos. I mean, it's just absolute chaos. I, it's just, it's insanity because you look at it even like, uh, you know, if you, if you, uh, if you stack multiple hard drives, right. And, and you're changing out the pins so you can have kind of a, you know, a chain of hard drives, you have the master drive and then, you know, you have the slave drives connected to it. Um, you know, I mean, they're, they're trying to redo all of uh, common language, but the political pl uh, correct, please. Uh, man, I, I don't know. I, I'm not happy about this. I it's think that once again, you know, Ripple should be focused on building the ecosystem, building their business. This isn't it. This is nonsense. nonsense. Um, they're they're you know creating more problem uh, for absolutely no reason whatsoever uh, to dwell into this type of uh, into this into this whole pattern man it's it's becoming a behavior pattern um i i don't know i mean it's um uh, i don't know well I, i'm a little concerned by it 
No, I, I, I got to tell you, I saw this and I said, I, I was, my mouth dropped open. I'm like, what? So then they had to create a repeatable process to to use the better lingo. Like they had, so I mean, the amount of work that went into doing this and the scripts they had to write, so they actually published their scripts. And then <clears throat> the rename, they had to rename the Git branches um, in their code base from master to main and all this other stuff. I'm like, man, the amount of work that went into this, you know? In summary, this is how we created automatic, automated and scalable method for identifying and replacing words from our code base and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, guys, really? This is incredibly um, insanity right here. And, but the best part, Jeff, that I, I got to tell you the part that I really enjoyed was the, the comments on the blog post are fantastic, some of them. Um, let's see, where is it? Oh, let me see. Yeah, so for, for example... Um, Crypto Popo, which he's he's always good for a laugh. He says, um, so this is the blog post here, right? So this is the, the let me share it here. Hang on a second. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so there you go. It's an inclusive language initiative, uh, part three. And then it goes into this. Popo says, ah, the social justice of inclusive terminology. That's what you need to be working on. Don't let technology and partnerships, etc., get in the way of that. That that pesky XRP investor has been pounding their fists for several years about Ripple being inclusive. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Ethereum isn't doing this. No, you know who else isn't doing it? Any other crypto, dude. And they keep going with the green. We're so green, we're green. That's great, but you know what? You're not stopping the Bitcoin genie. You're not putting that puppy back in the bottle. Bitcoin's going to be 100000 It's going to be 300000 It's going to be a million dollars. And they're going to be talking about green energy. It's like, okay, that's fun. Yeah, okay, everybody wants to have sustainable stuff on a green planet. But don't think that that's like, you know, you're going to get 99% inclusive like votes in there. People are like, yay, it's just not going to happen. Dude, I'm so fed up. I'm just so fed up with this stuff. It's just, it's so, it's just nonsense at this point. You know, this direction they're moving in because they, they first started off with trying to build, you know, like you were saying, this whole idea and this whole notion of being green and they're going after Bitcoin because it consumes, you know, way too much uh you know way too much power you know what at some point they're going to figure it out with bitcoin it's going to get scaled the right way um uh, maybe that day isn't isn't right now it's going to get figured out yes xrp is energy efficient transactions are seamless you're moving money at, at a low expense focus on what you're supposed to be focused on build that business go out there and market the hell out of your company and stop dwelling into this because you know what this is enough to turn me off of the company as a whole. There's a lot of projects out there. There are a lot of companies out there um, that are killing it, that are you know returning huge amounts of percentages. If these guys ever launch an IPO, I don't know that I would invest in their company as, as well, an IPO. I like the XRP, I like the XRP ledger. I like what other companies can do with the technology, um, honestly. Yo, but the more they keep dwelling into this nonsense, the more yeah. it turns me off from wanting to even be part of or, you know, to support any concept, anything that they come out with. I believe in the payment rails and the payment system, but someone's going to come along that's going to do it better and they're not going to dwell on this stuff, you know, and it's Ethereum's crushing it at $1,800 right now. Bitcoin's, you know, at 53, 54,000 has nothing to do with Ripple whatsoever. You know, but Ripple is tied up in a lawsuit right now with the SEC. And this is the stuff that they're going to focus their time and efforts on. You know, instead of getting out there, say, show me, show me, show me some uh, common language for regulatory clarity. Why don't they, why don't they spend every waking moment on regulatory clarity and, and put up a blog post on that? No, Jeff, I mean, they don't forget they, nonsense, they fired their lobby team. Look at this. Wooden Boat says there's a, there's a, there's a buck uh, 49 CA. Thank you very much for that. Well, look at this. I mean, I like seeing this. This is like the, some of the comments on there. While you're at it, trawl through the English dictionary, remove all the words that may offend, then create a safe place for those who fall through the cracks. Why the woke ideology? Just do what you're supposed to do. People get on board or they get off. It's not rocket science. Man, there's so many great slams in here, but the majority of it's like, what? You got time to write scripts that can that can crawl through your code so you can rename so that who's offended by the way jeff who's looking through their code their code base is protected 
They're the only ones, you know, if you go on GitHub or something like that, you're not going to be able to get, I mean, some of it may be open source, but most of the time, so you're talking about their developers. We know there's 500 plus people that work at Ripple. How many of them are devs? So um, out of those, how many devs, who's looking at the code and who's going, oh my God, master, man, I'm, I am, you know, they, they tried this in real estate and it lasted for a nanosecond when they tried to rename the master bedroom, the large bedroom or the, the, the deluxe suite. And they're like, the other, nah. The other bedroom with the bathroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? The old, yeah, the, the bedroom has the bathroom. No, that's an ensuite if you're watching up for this this TV. And I'm like, you know, there has to come a time where you got to put put your heads down, man. Focus on innovation. Don't be, I mean, and if you want to do this stuff internally, okay, fair enough, okay? But don't publicize it. It makes everybody wonder, like, what the hell's going on at Ripple that the devs got all this time to re reprogram all their code? I mean, and remove it's offensive. Crazy. I'm looking who's through this stuff, man. By the way, who's offended? Who's offended by it? Anybody? I, <laughs> I mean, I'm even looking for. But how do you how do you now code? <laughs> so if you're a coder and you come over to them, how do you code your project if they're changing terminology? I don't get it. Well, Are but, you but they've replaced it. You're it's... gonna replace it. I, I don't know. Well, Renaming what Git branches, so they're changing that. And in summary, this is how we create an automated and scalable method for both identifying and replacing words from our code base. Okay, I, Jeff. I mean, if you're if you're gonna start, you know, getting rid of language, or you're going to utilize incorrect terminology, that's where, you know, you have this the politically correct, you know, throwing around you know, all these other, you know, terminologies in and around, you know, fascism and all this, man, this to me is, you know, borderline, you know, and it's just, it's so crazy, man. I, I'm so fed up. You know, they got rid of Dr. Seuss, man, Dr. Seuss, come on. You want to get rid of Dr. Seuss? What about, what about uh, Catch-22? Uh, what about Catcher in the Rye? What are they going to do? Are they going to start going through it's all, canceled, all of these? Jeff. What, what about Mark Twain's books? You nope. know, I mean, when when does this end? And now they're going after ends. code. It there's it's never ending. All of a sudden, you wake up and you're in the Soviet Union. You know, from a number of years ago, and you're all driving the same car, all looks the same. You know, you're living in uh, very <laughs> uh, you know concentrically shaped boxes. Uh, you know, it's it's so crazy. We're here because cryptocurrency is supposed to be decentralized, and you're supposed to exactly, be right you know on. moving on. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's let's build the financial space and focus on the financial space. I Look, mean, this, Son is, this is crazy, man. Sonia Soros says, I'm offended he brought it up because it causes a divide in itself, right? It's like, it does. keep keep that that stuff to yourself. Like, By the way, this is part one. There are terms we're using today in the technology industry that are artifacts of previous eras, just as we've been moving towards a more inclusive and fairer society. You know what, Jeff? This whole concept about, of, there's no such thing about, as fair. We're talking about like ancient, ancient uh, the Roman Empire. We're talking about uh, racist you know, and offensive Egypt. terms, right? Egypt. No, no, no. Are we no talking we're, talking, we're going back like to the '40s, Jeff. <laughs> we're going back to the '40s when we had punch punch machines, and you know they were they were developing the. And it says, uh, and it's uh, we we should update our industry's terminology and discard the false idea that technical terms are without stigma or immune from the this stuff. Listen, you know one who got this right, and everyone railed against him. Brian Armstrong, he's the CEO of Coinbase. He said, "Look, this is not a political organization. This is a crypto organization." If you want to, you know, espouse your 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 BS, whether side you're on, out. We'll pay for you. We'll pay you to get you guys out of here. You'll be out. Boom, 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 boom. That's right. <laughs> a lot of a lot on it. Are you? Are you goes. Remember the you goes. By the way, oh, I yeah. knew. By the way, in high school, I knew somebody that had a you go. They went over a speed bump in the back window, <laughs> shattered. <laughs> anyway, that's oh, enough man. of this stuff. But I, I really, don't really feel need like they telling us what's wrong and right. <laughs> Well, that's the whole thing. You know, that's why we always press on, Jeff. I mean, it's like one of the things right. we talk about, centralization is all about control, right? I get it. It's a, it's a centralized organization. But quite honestly, you know, we're moving towards decentralization where, you know, if you're going to have if you're going to have freedom of choice, let people choose what they want to hear. The whole idea of freedom of speech is there is no such thing. You can't have something called hate speech because you know why? Because who's yeah. the person that, so who's going to be the official person that de deems what is hate speech? That's the problem in itself. It's like, there you're going to have, it's like just, you know, when we were kids, they were like, you know, they would say, I never understood this terminology until I got to be like a pretty well along adult, which is sticks and stones 
will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. But how and can it you was, talk about hate speech, though, Chip? They're they're removing hate from the dictionary. <laughs> okay, well, can't even you, use that word, right? That's out. <laughs> There's no no more hate. That's out. But let's get to some more pressing stuff here. Let's talk about some. We talked that we floated this a little bit at the beginning, but U.S. lawmakers are introducing a bill to clarify crypto regs. And I absolutely love Patrick McHenry. The guy is just a rock star. And Stephen Lynch from uh, from Massachusetts. Good. And you see what we got here? We have a Republican and a Democrat getting together, saying, "Hey, yeah, man, we'll do it." You know, bipartisan again, bipartisan. Two guys getting together. Uh, they're creating a working group composed of industry experts, representatives nice. from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Put them on a boat and sink it in the ocean. No, I'm just kidding. Huh? And the Commodities Dude. Future Training Commission. You've got you've got four four solid co-sponsors. Warren yeah. Davidson. There's Warren Davidson. Ted Bud. Ted Bud. Both well known in the crypto space. Uh, Thompson Glenn. And then you have uh, uh, Rep. Lynch uh, Stephen. Man, that's yeah. awesome. It really is or awesome. The other way around, Stephen Lynch. Huh. And there's <laughs> exactly they're saying, backwards. So and they're, and they're saying they want to eliminate the barriers um, to innovation, right? And that's exactly what we're talking about, Jeff. It's like the whole yeah. idea of this. What we got into this whole thing was innovation. Problems are getting yeah. solved. You look at the new projects that are coming up. They're targeting a pretty large marketplace. They're going after it with full force, and that's why you see so many projects doing so well because of the use case, you know, and Brad Garlinghouse said 99% of them probably won't survive. Well, yeah, if you're looking at the 6,000 as a whole, but yeah. a lot of them are gonna be very successful to the tune of, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, you know, I mean, where do they stop really? That's right. So, yo, what is up? We got Ceci here from Michigan. I love uh, Michigan. Uh, what is up, Michigan? So, man, this is, this is exciting. HR 1602 is what you're talking about. And it, it, you know, it's it's exciting because it's the beginning stages. So all this really is, it says to direct the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, the CFTC, and the Securities Exchange Commission, the SEC, uh, to jointly establish a digital asset working group for and for other purposes. Yeah, there's okay? the bill right there. It is right but there. That, but that's good, man. It was just introduced yesterday. Already referred to two committees, went to the Financial Services Committee and the Agricultural Committee or the Committee on Agriculture. Um, not sure why it's going there, but, you know, maybe it's relevant. So but it, it's good. It's in the Financial Services Committee. It may, you know, die a fast death over there and it might never get any action. However, these types of bills get action. You know, we've seen over the past uh, number of years when they put a bill in front when that creates a working group to do more research on a project, they seem to get those bills off the ground because they love spending money on research projects. Um, and they love sitting in committees and getting together and uh, drinking scotch and whiskey and sitting around and talking about stuff. So well, the whole idea of creating a committee to to talk about recommendations, you know, for great idea. So how do you improve the primary, secondary? Look, I mean, it's a really good first step. So they're kind of like I like what they're doing. They're taking a step back instead of trying to put the whole kit and caboodle through like, let's just push it all in and put all your chips in. They're like, all right, let's slow down. Why don't we yeah. get a couple people on both sides of the aisle? Let's get together. Let's that's and then and when they get together, then they can start hashing stuff out and together they can craft something to make sense. And it'd be funny if they go ahead and craft something and it comes out way before this ripple case ends, you know? It's possible. But again, I, I, I don't believe that for a second that the uh, SEC believes that XRP or any digital asset for that matter is a is a security today. You know, I don't think that that's why, otherwise it would have gone after so many people through enforcement, right? And I heard right. that Tony interviewed, of course, I haven't I've been running all day, but I haven't seen, I know that Tony from Thinking Crypto interviewed um, Hester Pierce, better known as Enforcement Mom. Um, mm -hmm. And so that, I, I definitely want to watch that because I'm sure he asked her some great questions and, you know, kind of see what, you know, what she had to say in that whole thing. I mean, it'd be curious to see what she came up with, but <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just, I don't want to read that. It's just, it's divisive. Dude, Tony, Tony, Tony I'm not, you got a hundred percent sure. But thinks it's magic. <laughs> Damn right. It there is, you Tony. go. Tony coined that. He's <laughs> nailed it. By the way, we're going to be putting that on shirts. We got a couple things we're rolling out. So Jeff and I are working on some things. You know, a lot of people, um, 
you know, what, say like, well, hey, do you guys have any merch? We're like, no, but we do now. We're going to be coming out with some merch, some cool merch that you guys will be able to buy hoodies and T-shirts and on the chain stuff. And we're going to put that, I'm not XRP, not 100% sure, but I think it's magic. Got to put that on a shirt yeah, because I that's fine. one of our favorite things to say. Now, Ronnie Sai says, hey, I seen an old post today showing that the IP addresses for Bitcoin.com, Ripple.com, and a few others were created by the same person in 2005. How would you guys interpret this? Love you guys. Appreciate that, Ronnie. Man. Well, I'd like to see more about that. On the So the thing about the IP address is that now back in the day, you know, I know I, I, I I'll um, date myself here, but I know back in the day when we were getting T1s, you know, you had a signed, you, you buy blocks of IP addresses. So you don't necessarily spin up an IP address per se, but if it has, if you have a, if you have an IP address um, in the same, in a similar block, in other words, where it's like, you know, one, two, two, dot, whatever, dot, 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 and you have that last one, you, they used to be in blocks. So you know, in a T1, you had a bunch of smaller bands that would form the big one. That was like the beginning part, but you usually invest in blocks of IP addresses. Now, it, see, I'd have to know more about that post, Ronnie. So I would like, why don't you tweet that at us? Because I'd like to see more about what that is before I could really comment on it. But if you look at something like Bitcoin.com or Ripple.com, you know, in in 2005, it's kind of weird. It's, it, it's It's way before, you know be interesting and i don't know about the ip addresses now it'd be interesting if the same person registered those two but if the same ip address might show if it was hosted on the it depends who the uh you know who the registrar was because based right. if it stayed at the registrar um it could potentially have the same ip address right if it wasn't actually there lionel saying that uh, tiffany hayden spotted the ip address a couple years ago i think i remember her talking something about that ip address but again you'd have to look at it a little bit to see but again, if it's at a registrar, yeah, you're going to see, they're all going to be on the same, uh, you know, IP address. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Now, if the same person registered it or it was a secret register and stuff like that, that's a bigger thing to get at. Right. But. Hey, Sean saying, don't lose faith in Ripple yet. Give them a chance and let them redeem themselves. Oh, we're not, we're not giving up on them, Sean. No, we're not giving up. They're going to they're gonna redeem themselves when they, uh, when they beat the SEC. That is redemption. Tony says he wants 10% because of the, the, the whole thing. We might have to put Fisk on there. The Fiskaroos. Yep. Fiskaroos. That's, that's right. The Fiskaroos. Well, I'll tell you what, Tony. So. We'll give you some we'll give you some merch. How's that? We'll make you happy. Um, yeah, not about the subnets or networks. The fact the name is similar, not identical, partially open coin, otherwise known as Ripple is among the domains. There you go. Yeah, and there that's that's a really good uh breakdown, Atomic. Appreciate that. Yep. It's all good. The beginning of the show is a little bumming. Sorry about that, John Doe, but that things ha that things happen. But sometimes you gotta, sometimes that we was, gotta just that was gotta call fault. stuff out. That's my fault. I want to go on a little bit of a rant there, but it happens once in a while. I just want them to focus on focus on the stuff that is, you know. It's the same way if you go to a, if you go to a concert and someone gets up and starts, you know what I did today and I did this and you should do that. It's like no, 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 man. I'm here for the music. Uh, you know that's cool if you want to do that in an interview or something like that. It's the point yeah. is the company should be agnostic. They shouldn't be advocating one way or another way. They should be, hey, business. And I think, you know, as I was pointing out, I believe that Brian Armstrong from from uh, from Coinbase took the right approach on that. Um, I think he's he doesn't he doesn't we don't know where his politics lie, and that's great. I don't want to know. It's just like, hey, that's I want right. to know that your company is looking after my best interest. I want to know that you want to grow. I know that if I invest money um, in your stock, that I want to be able to grow with it. I want to know what you're doing to grow the business. That's all I'm talking about. I don't like the, sorry if it was a little bit of a bummer, but just focus on what you're great at. Focus on the innovation parts. And if you guys want to do stuff like that, keep it to yourself. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Keep it to yourself. Bummer. Danny wants to know what, what are you going to do if they lose the suit? No, no, I'll move on. Suit. Well, no, how are they going to lose this? I'll move well, on with my life. But, but they're not. They won't. They're not going to lose this. I don't well, there's nothing will. to lose. They'll get slapped with some sort of a fine. The problem is, is that this is too deep. You've got you've got Ripple the attorneys filing Freedom of Information Act requests to find out exact all the communication that happened between Vitalik Buterin, Vitalik, and, and all of the emails, all of the the messaging between them and the Stellar Foundation, because they're going to have to re they're going to have to revisit that and call. And, and say that they sold unregistered securities because they did in 2014. They talked about they they sold the uh, the the ether and they didn't deliver it for another year. So see, people bought stuff 
anticipating that's an investment contract right there so plan b xdc XG. yeah i like xdc a lot too you know jeff and i have looked or at this Zinfin. project zinfin's a cool project i think we'll sure. probably start talking a little bit more about because i, I think, think it's so. it's got a Plus lot of really set up a validator node yeah we just need we're just nine million short jeff nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand million short that's it just a little bit that's okay <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get there you know we'll we'll get there no matter what so it's all it's all a good thing um i wanted to um there you go regardless of how the sec suit ends xrp is a dollar coin minimum <laughs> which would still be four times his dca so he hodls there you go it's still there you know i mean it's you got asia you've got the rest of the world the sec in, impacts and influences the u.s the u.s is the one that suffers you know, that that's uh, about how it goes. But yeah, man, this there, is there's spot on. Yeah, look at, look at this. Go. I want to play this, Jeff, because Deaton put this tweet out a little bit earlier today. He said, hey, XRP community, I need your help. Um, I need help for our case. So he's putting something together for the uh, class action. He said, if you're aware of any use case for XRP that doesn't involve or depend on Ripple, please describe that independent utility by replying to this tweet thread. You're educating me so maybe I can educate the judge. Example, staking for money. So I threw that in there. Both of them are on the chain. YouTube channels are coil enabled. So every time someone is watching with a $5 coil subscription, Jeff and I get an email at the wrap of every show saying you got, you know, 0.70, 1.2 XRP. That's amazing. I mean, we thank you for that. But you guys are streaming XRP to us, um, you know, watching this right now. Our website, on onthechain.io, coil enabled. My blog, coil enabled. So that's yep. how we're there receiving sort of a compensation but i wanted to dig deep way chip what's the other the uh company over in australia which company there's a company in australia that uh oh yeah 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 um, um what was that one called something cash or yes uh, was it that FX? was a good that's was it effects something uh, fx yeah something, yeah, something FX. fx and that was using uh the ledger and XRP. Yeah, maybe your aussie friends will know that but i i tell you what by the way, Matt Hamilton did a phenomenal job today. I watched, I listened to this in the background, but he, Jeff, when he said he was going to have upcoming guests, I didn't know he was going to have them all today. Oh, were they all on today? They were all on today. And David Schwartz did probably one of the coolest things ever. And again, maybe we'll have this for, you guys can watch it. Here it is, but it was Very on cool. Twitch. But he actually did a demonstration of, the, of, a, of a, a 2015 era X um, Ripple wallet which was pretty badass. He actually did a summary of the whole, how Ripple was founded as a company, OpenCoin. He took us all the way through it. He did it like in 15 or 20 minutes. Sweet. And then we had, um, we had, um, let's see who else was on there. It was just, it was just an amazing show. They, they had so many phenomenal people on there. And let me see. Yeah, so then Matt Hamilton says, I use XRP as collateral for a loan from Nexo. So there you go. You could also say that, you know, you could also have a loan at, at a lot of other places, but not only that, but you could have it at, at Celsius.network. He uses XRP to fund a Wirex debit card to pay for goods at the supermarket, receives XRP payment his because his blog is also monetized. Uh, yeah, Chip, there's so much. I mean, overall, the ecosystem is still relatively new, you know, so as they start, you know, fighting the fight, you know, the use cases are just kind of being you know, identified right now um, in Jeff, terms of the actual use. They've identified it, but now they're actually doing it. But you know, Jeff, this built, blog post was even opening, for, it was eye-opening, right? Because I look at this and it says, yep. Rob Licker says, we've, we've had him on the show. He's like borrowing and minting USDX stable coins in Kava Labs using Kava That's CDP right, and Kava. lending it, right? So he's using, so there you go. And then they use a wrapped version of XRP and Binance chain. Then they mint FXRP and Flare Networks. So right. it's, you know, we always know about the use, different use cases. Arturo Portilla, who says he sends money abroad, international payments, IOUs, and the XRP um, uh, decentralized exchange. The donations. I like the store of value, the escrows, online tips. I mean, yeah, this this is this is good stuff. This is but, where, you know, but this is actively being used right now as we speak. But these are also use cases moving forward. Uh, you know, so. I think I think it's fantastic. It really is fantastic. Yeah, and you've got cards. the exchanges, the uphold card. Look at, uh, uh, yeah, look at uh, James. You know, he's getting uh, gets paid in XRP. So I mean, that's one person, but you know, that's a use case. Sure, well, there's others. About, 
Well, how about selling a mountain bike on Craigslist and accepting P2P uh, payment in XRP over the XRPL? Ledger. Well, there you go. There you yeah. go. I mean, there's so many. Mr. B says, uh, Linto, um, Lint, Linkto, what is that? Linkto. Yeah, Linkto, Linkto. Incorporated. Yeah, Linkto. Announced in their conference today that 30 plus people have used XRP to buy Ripple SPVs, which are actual securities. So there you go. So right. they actually use XRP to buy securities, Jeff, which is like the only security we're probably going to get around. You just sent 3,000 worth of XRP to family over in Turkey. There you go. Um, you know, and it's and they get it immediately. I mean, think about that. How how great is that? And then they have a, a they have the XRP link crypto card, so they're able to spend it. Now, if you can do that, you know, there's ways to get around. As long as they have the card, they have that debit card, they can use it. They can spend it. You can use it anywhere in the world. I mean, this is outstanding. I like Nordic, this idea of the charities. Yeah, Nordic and so I was part of Good XRP early days, and we had different charities we supported, and you could tip it. Check this out. There were seven charities received XRP from all over the world. 283 XRP were donated by XRP. 283,000. Sorry, they, they, they used the decimal point over there. But I had nothing to do with Ripple, but it showed the effectiveness of XRP as micropayments. You can read about the stats here at Good XRP. So there you go. I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's endless. And this was uh, in 2018. Um, you know, uh, there you go. King Blue Esports. was. Esports. Get their salaries in XRP. Yeah, P2P payments and over XRPL. Yeah. I lend my XRP on the Celsius network. There you um, go. There's the hey, esports right one. there. There's another one. Uh, Mr. K, I use my ledger with XRP on it to prop up my fridge. <laughs> there, there you, you go. go. There you go. <laughs> that might be the best use case ever, Mr. K. I got to say. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really cool to see so many people chime in from all over the place. Um, fully functional network allowing all participants. GFAM is another one they talked about, which is if it's a social net. You guys know about GFAM? GFAM. You go on there and you can you hook up your Zum wallet and you or you can you hook up your coil too. And if you like something or if you spend some time on someone's content, it's constantly streaming. Um, and they talked about that today on the stream, which was fantastic. There you go. There's James Rule XRP. There he is I'm getting paid you know? in the XRP. It's freaking, it's outstanding. So, you know, it's just, I mean, it, I mean, I was just scrolling through this going, man, this is the MG.social. The network's monetized with XRP through Coil. And there's so many blog sites out there. I think, um, I think Condé Nast has a bunch of their websites yep. that's natively. Um, hey, Whitefly's on. Have you, uh, have you heard of this yet? Has Stellar I have not partnered no. with MoneyGram? Is that something uh, that uh, is out there? I have not seen that yet. I've not seen it yet, no. Interesting stuff. Hey, so for any anybody here that's brand new to the uh, to the stream, if you are brand new, we have over 300 people on right now. Go down, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet. And then once you hit the subscribe button, there's a little tiny bell notifier. You hit that and you'll be notified every single time we stream live. And by the way, coming up on March 28th, we are going to be hosting virtual meetup number two sponsored by on the chain so we're looking forward to that make sure you guys look out on sunday we're going to start posting ways that you guys can uh can register for the meetup uh and that's going to be awesome so that's going to be on the 28th which is a sunday so and also as love uh, live love live heal here says subscribe to the otc podcast because we do have a podcast uh that's lady e it's great that is lady e i just i just i just noticed that you're right but by the lady way Jeff, e. check this out i actually have my song out on paper and my music out on pay burner so pay burner was another one that you could buy it that, with xrp pay burner was um the crypto cowboy at crypto cowboy right awesome so Fantastic. i mean there's just so many damn use cases for this thing it's on there, and it's growing it's just it's, oh. you know, just fantastic. I can't stop. I can't stop. Coil for micropayments. Flare Networks and Flare Finance. Smart Contracts and DeFi. Real Sologenic. Tokenized financial oh. assets. The 28th is a Saturday. Oh, it's the 29th then, Jeff. 29th, is it? Let's look. We're Let's not double good, check that. We're not good with math. We're not good with dates. But any Forte platform, that's uh, that's gaming. <laughs> double check. The time. Trust Line app, that's so PDP credit. Well, we're you doing get... it on the 28th, our Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> that's... 
Is it's it the 28th, Jeff? Sunday what day for is us. it? Oh, the 28th is a Sunday. Yeah, it's March 28th. 28th. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 29th is a Monday. Looking at the calendar here. Yeah, had to just... double check. Had to double check because either way, we'd stick to our 28th on a Sunday. But it is Sunday. So, man, there's uh, great stuff here. But Apex is not buying what you're selling. Because he says that XRP is definitely a scam coin. <laughs> not no use cases to be found. Not oh, one. Not one. No, we didn't. We, you know what, Apex, you're absolutely spot on. I mean, we were just like making stuff up. It wasn't really real. But that's so funny, though. I love. I appreciate that humor because it really is spot on. I mean, it really when you think yeah. about it. But this is. Yep. But but what he's what, you know Apex is going on about there is that that's how the rest of the world acts. What use case do you have in this banker's coin? What do you say? It's like, you know, put you on trial. Like, you have a shite coin, you know. You have a banker's coin. You and your banker's coin. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Kim.com, and I sometimes I love MGI them. MGI has partnered with Stellar. Sorry. There you go. That's why they wanted it down. Well, they don't have, I don't necessarily know that they have the rails, but that's cool. Well, good for them. That? Well, what does that Stellar mean, though? Too. I don't know what it means. Money Graham Stellar. Well, the funny thing about it is um, that goes to show you right then in there uh, with the in the southeast. I don't Stellar. see anything. Did you find something? Of course I did. Let's see. Stellar Base Lightnet partners with Money Graham in the southeast. That was announced back in February. It says Lightnet that's though. Not, that's not. That's not. That's how we we've been up on things. So Stellar Stellar based Lightnet. So Lightnet is ba is built on Stellar, or is it part of Stellar? I don't know anything finding... about Lightnet. What is Lightnet? Well, it's a Stellar partner, but I don't find anything where they've where they've not a lot. That's yeah, interesting. I mean, if, though. if you guys oh, see it, you know, if you see it, drop it in there. The problem is though, what the what you don't realize is that Ripple had the rails set up, right? So you have to have a communication channel. You need the liquidity on both sides. You have to be able to convert that. It's not a matter of you know the thing that people forget is the on demand liquidity is what's missing in this picture. And this, the chief financial officer said it was a ma major hit. He, he actually came out and said, oh, man, this is a gut punch because we don't have anything to replace it with. Right. And so they, they, did, they did find a little bit of a, of a hit to that. But I wanted to put this up. Kim.com tweeted this out. You guys know Kim.com. Um, hopefully you do. But he's uh, in New Zealand. But he said this is not what Satoshi wanted. So he puts up this video here. Let me share this thing here. Share. Make sure I pull the right tab and the audio here. And there we go. So this is what he's saying that Satoshi did not want this. And here we have Michael Saylor and Tony. You might know this guy here, Tony from Thinking Crypto. Are you watching, Jeff? But I don't know who it is. I'm not watching anything. You forgot to pull it up. Hang on a second. Let me put it up put there. there. There you go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so here we go. So here's Michael Saylor talking with Tony. So at the end of the day, I think there'll be K there'll be know your customer this, there'll be anti-money laundering that, there'll be some tax regulations, there'll be some back and forth over what you can do, there'll be concerns about privacy. That's why I look at Bitcoin and I think it's pretty clear if if the use case is store of value well like 7.8 billion people on earth need a store of value and probably the value of that is 100 to 300 trillion dollars right that's enough that's good yes, if the use case is that. currency replace the dollar and the euro well, that seems like it's i mean that's just intentionally inflammatory we don't need to replace the euro and the dollar the bankers are going to be upset about replacing the euro and the dollar I don't think it's going to happen, and not in the next decade or two decades, so we don't need to get wrapped around the axle on that. Music's the best, Jeff. And if the use case I'm is medium it. of exchange and payment, like, we don't really need to pay for a pizza with it. We don't need to pay for a Starbucks coffee with it. I mean, nope. that's already solved by Alibaba and PayPal right. and Square and Apple Pay and Amazon and Google Pay, and it's... You know, they can be regulated and Visa and MasterCard. So, Rip so you can leave Visa and MasterCard alone. You can leave the dollar and the euro alone. We can agree to pay taxes. We can, uh, you know, we can not thumb our nose at regulators. It's awesome. Nice. BTC attracts the status quo. There you go. Let's go.
real digi, 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 digital money revolution. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Hey, by the way, LightNet is a copy of RippleNet. LightNet is a copy stuff. of RippleNet. Well, Interesting stuff. It Man, it's funny. X, uh, Whitefly says they got they got them with the old news. I'm looking. The news is like two and a half weeks old. February. That's already considered old, old news. That's like ancient news already. That's well, you're like, like have you heard of it? Ago. I'm like, you know, you'd be surprised. I mean, there's some st stuff that just uh, slips through once in a while. You're like, what? It's crazy. Well, I was going off what the chief financial officer said just a couple of days ago, okay. where he said like they had nothing to replace it with, and it's a major, it's a major financial hit for them. Now, <laughs> you know, I mean, who knows? I mean, anything's possible. I don't. If it's even if it's a knockoff of the Ripple Net, listen, man. I mean, it's probably not going to be that solid. I mean. So Jeff, I saw this from Greg Gregory Manorino. This was something interesting here because let's see. I want to get your thoughts on this one here, Jeff. Jeff, I want to get your thoughts on this. Okay. This Trying is out of Bloomberg. Something. It said U.S. banks want a long-sought regulatory break that will now allow them to expand their balance sheets by as much as six hundred billion without regulatory oversight. Thought on that? I'm reading this again. I know um, you have to read it again, Jeff. I know you have to read it again. Go ahead and read it. Yeah. What is this here? Without regulatory oversight? Yeah. So they can expand their balance sheet as yeah, much as 600, 600 billion. 600 billion without regulatory oversight. Banks. Nothing bad Banks. can happen there, Jeff. I don't, even know the, I don't even know what to say. There are. No. <laughs> they're already insolvent most of them they're about ready to collapse but no wait, just go ahead and just, why, don't, why why 600 billion why not just extend it all the way just go you know straight well they got to start somewhere trillion. you know that's how we start somewhere trillion and not worry about it you know i mean that's i well, love it yeah so let's jump in this next story in satoshi we trust bitcoin banknotes under development former director of the u.s department of treasury bureau and engraving and printing Larry Felix and Bitcoin Foundation founding chairman Peter Vesenis today announced a new project to create Bitcoin-backed banknotes through their cone venture called Noteworthy. So that's like an it. interesting sort of a weird project, right? I like Noteworthy. Yeah, they'll oversee the design, development, and launch of the banknotes. Now, what? Now, I don't know. I sometimes I look at this stuff and I think it's parody, but it's a real it's a real thing. The physical, Noteworthy's physical cryptocurrency banknote marries the utility and the security from the paper money, digital asset, and blockchain industries. Now, if you want to get adoption, you say, like, this is Bitcoin. You're like, because if you say, where's the Bitcoin? Well, it's in the computer. No, it's on my ledger. Well, it's, 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 in, it's in the cloud. People don't get that. But now you, you get out a Noteworthy, you know, and it kind of, it's equipped with a secure cryptographic microprocessor and utilizes all right. the banknotes. Awesome. Right? Yeah, it's it's, a, it's a it's an interesting idea. <laughs> it's actually smarter than I thought. You know, it's like yeah, interesting. Like uh, everything's interesting. It's all interesting, man. It's all interesting. There, people are going to keep trying and building and experimenting and trying to figure things out. And eventually, you know, we all figure it out. You know, it just keeps going and going. I mean, that's you know, that's Which, the point. But you know how some yeah. terms go out of style? Like, you know, like right now it's like NFT, NFTs. You see an NFT and, it, and, it's, and it's like everywhere, dude. It's well, like everyone's talking. It's on every news program. It's on every magazine yeah, cover. It's exactly. like. Exactly. And no one's talking about DeFi. Before it was always, you know, DeFi, DeFi. Now that's gone. You know, it's Bitcoin. That's gone. Now they're on to NFTs. That'll be gone. I don't. I think the whole NFT thing, you know, in part is kind of a passing, uh, you know, craze. Uh, but at the same time, something I didn't, you know, I thought about it, but, you know, as we start, you know, moving forward and they start encrypting video or images, uh, one use case uh, are the uh, are trading cards. So think about like sport men uh, sports memorabilia, you know, you have your baseball cards. Now you have uh, encrypted digital collector cards and why not, you know, so. If we're able to do that, uh, I think it's outstanding. You know, I was reading an article earlier today about it and the amount of money that's being generated already on Same. these cards is phenomenal. I mean, it's just, it's mind boggling, but you need to do that. So if you're gonna create a digital collector card online, 
uh, you have to encrypt it somehow. You know, just like with this uh, Muhammad Ali uh, NFT minted 50 years after the fight of the century with Joe Frazier. That's impressive. It so is what impressive. Is that all about? What are they well, doing the other with that thing, NFT? Well, I'll tell you the other thing that's really impressive about it. It's actually licensed. So they're they're rolling out this thing called the Ali Collection. It celebrates the life and legacy of Muhammad Ali. It's the first ever licensed NFT. Now we're getting into license where you're licensing, um, you know, his name or his likeness or something like that. And I think there you go. That to me is like that's a whole other phase. Now you're going to have people that you know companies are going to specialize in licensing so yep. you know look at look at you know how right now like you license like pro sports you know you have pro you know football teams all over the world it's like you license to be able to sell their merch and you license for that now you can license to sell their nft versions of that so that right there and it's is groundbreaking in the sense that you know you had the first ever music drive nft now you got the first licensed so it, it cool. almost doesn't it almost doesn't stop so i think that's the real big deal there mm -hmm. and by the way ali did lose that fight but he did win uh he went in 1974 1975 but man what what an outstanding fighter and human being he was man and his oh, uh his actually his daughter was quite the fighter as well she was like oh, she, a, she was, was great a, she was a she was badass great. she was so check this out um oh did you pull it up there too oh go ahead so this was uh you know, Banksy NFT. So check this one out. This one's great. So this one, uh, the painting burning is a powerful symbol of people's growing belief in non-fungible tokens. So they sent, they sold this Banksy right here for how much? $382,000. This is the NFT version of it. <laughs> now, <laughs> so here it says Banksy uh, morons, uh, the, the thing here was destroyed on camera in a burning ceremony in Brooklyn earlier in the month. The digitized copy of it is what was sold as an NFT, you know, for how much? $382,000. Now, it's amazing because this, uh, look at look at what it was. Um, so it sold for 228 ETH, uh, which is 382,000 to Bitter Galaxy. That's really amazing. Um, here it says the original, Look. the British street artist original painting was sold for sixteen thousand dollars, sixteen thousand pounds back in two thousand six. Uh, it depicts a crowded auction house. But what's amazing about all of this stuff? Oh, here it says I thought it was kind of funny. The lot for sale behind the auctioneer is framed canvas that sim simply reads, "I can't believe you morons actually buy this shit." This is so like apropos <laughs> for. For the timing of it so this you know an auction sells for sixteen thousand. so these guys this group of blockchain investors bought it for ninety five thousand dollars they buy this painting for ninety five thousand. it was verified by banksy authentication body pest control whatever then they burned it and they burned the painting uh right after that and they turned the digital format into the nft i mean it's just uh it's amazing you know, so now, so now it's uh, it's coded in, in indelibly as the property of Galaxy. That's what's amazing as well. So, part of the NFT, it doesn't just uh, it doesn't just have the encryption of the blockchain of the authentication, but it also connects, you know, who the owner of the property is. To me, that that's unbelievable. But that's what they did with this. I mean, this is. I love it's awesome, it. man. Yeah, I, I love it. Too. I love the whole idea of what you, you can't. I I can't believe you morons actually buy this shit from sixteen thousand to ninety two thousand, and then it's burned completely and sold off for three hundred eighty two thousand. In uh, oh, it's free. It's outstanding. It's outstanding. You know what that re what that reminds me of, Jeff? Yeah. And there was another uh, Banksy. It's funny because a buddy of mine actually owns a couple of Banksy. He bought them early days, like 12, 13 years ago. So he's got some original Banksy's. He should do something very similar with that, some stunt. But That's this, awesome. if you remember this story here, this was, I think, at Christie's auction, right? So they were yep. all looking at the Banksy and they were super excited about it. And For a record $1.4 million, did the picture start to slip out of its frame into shreds below? Oh, I remember this. The anonymous this. artist claims to be... They shred, so someone bought it and all of a sudden... <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. I remember it, that. It half shredded. Oh God! Instagram, he post look at the <laughs> look at the guy. He's probably on the phone buying it. Look at that. It gets shredded, dude. That's the craziest. That 
That was one of the greatest. That was like the greatest stunt. That was one point four million dollars. Someone said, "Oh yeah, I want a Banksy. I want to put it in my wall." Yeah. Posted a photo of his prank with the caption, "Going, going, gone." <laughs> you just gotta love stuff like that, man. That is just, man. People are clever, and these stunts are gonna get better and better. I think. Um, I mean, I was thinking about putting my kidney like on as an NFT. You know what I mean? It's like because you have two of them. I mean, you know. I just like, uh, why not? I have a kidney or maybe like a lung or something as an NFT and it'll sell right. for like $10 billion, right? I mean, it'll just be a photo of it and then I'll put it back and like take a photo of it. You have a photo of it. And you walk around with my, and everyone's going, come on, Chip, that's a little morbid and stupid. And then someone's going to go do it and you'll be like, oh, that that's right. Chip and Jeff were talking about that that one night. That's dummies. Right. How cool is that? Big dummies. We need to, we need to do something with an NFT. We're going to NFT something with on the chain maybe for tony fisk well nft the uh the statement uh uh you know you know you know which statement i'm talking about yeah you're talking about I the i'm not 100 sure. sure but i think it's magic <laughs> well nft that how cool is that so this is one of the reasons Baby that Yeti. i say that john deaton is like a hero he's really the He's really the guy that you really want to pay a lot of attention to as far as an attorney. There's a lot of great attorneys out there that really provide great commentary. But I like John just because he's he's like he's he's got it in the game. So this is his FOIA request. And he, he's looking for a copy of the Joseph Grunfest, former SEC chairman to Jay Clayton authored in December of 2020. Um, Joe Grunfest um, actually sent a letter in December to Jay Clayton saying, do not do this. This is a bad move. This is going to be detrimental. Don't do it. And he's a former chair. Then we have, what's her name? Mary Jo White. She's another former SEC chair, which says, no, no, this is a dumb move. He wants any letters, emails, correspondence from Grunfest, the former SEC chair, Jay Clayton, or any, any of the personnel of the SEC regarding the filing of the SEC v. Ripple. Um, warning Jay Clayton and the SEC that the mere filing of the complaint would cause unprecedented billions of losses to innocent investors. So I love what he's doing here because now he's showing that, you remember how in that complaint that we heard from, um, one of the things that was alleged, they said, well, the SEC attorneys, or no, they said, they said attorneys advised Ripple that it could potentially be a security. Well, you got a former SEC chair saying it would cause unprecedented billions of losses to innocent investors. So showing the negligence and skirting their own responsibility. He's also looking at any letters from the SEC chairman from Jay Clayton or any authorized SEC personnel for acting director Brian Brooks of the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency of the other Office of the um, Personnel regarding. So he's also going another step further. And again, this is an awesome FOIA request. Beautifully done. Well played, John. Man, you get it well Another played. One. He's putting he's putting it in place. I like it. You know, it's it's so it's so key. You know, the SEC needs to kind of be put in their place a little bit. Maybe you know, as as you look back in retrospect, you know what Kick was trying to do over their whole kin token. Remember, mm. they kept poking the SEC in the eye big time, and they said, you know, their objective they were going to raise money to help others fight the SEC cases, but. You know, they just kind of went, you know, went away. They got their $5 million fine and and they, you know, they went away. But, you know, you never heard a peep out of them after that. They're just silent, you know. But here you've got, there was the, the beginning of the trend, which is you can't just sit back and allow the SEC to dictate and push people around. Uh, and here's a prime example. It's not just that they're pushing people around, but they're doing it with no understanding of the space of what happens, you know, and, and going back seven, eight years yeah, and focusing on, well, it may have been a security, or at least they believe it was a security at the time they were trading it seven, eight years ago. But then you fast forward seven, eight years. What about today? Is that, is it a security today? Because no. if it's not a security today, then let's get some clarity. If it is a security today, then, you know, why did they let all those other things happen? And we've talked about it, you know, in regards to the trades with MoneyGram. And now, you know, we're seeing the communications they've had with different exchanges that were listing XRP.
goes on and on and on, you know? So maybe, again, Kick had it right. They kept poking him in the eye a little bit. Yeah, yeah well, for a $5 know. million dollar fine, know. it was like, and they, they, I don't know what they netted on that whole thing, but it was way more than $5 million. Was it like $20, $30 million? Holy cow. Yeah. Plus, they yeah. start looking. Yeah, right there. You go like this. And SEC needs to understand they're trying to step on the toes of all other global governments. That's another great that's point. A, that's a really good point. Because at and, the end of the day, crypto is global. Blockchain is, clo is global. And we're seeing this development take place all over the world. Uh, and it's blossoming all over the world. And yet the SEC over here, again, run around with their shoelaces untied, tripping over themselves. And they just don't know what to do about it. Um, they're just they're just trying to buy time. That's all it is. They're buying time, and it's uh, it's gonna bite us, you know, if they don't get their act together pretty soon. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, Gary Gensler comes in, and it was all excitement. Yeah, yeah, Gary, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then nothing happens. So it's like. I mean, look, he's, he's walking into a just a uh, like a hornet's nest. It's like it's like the first day on the job. I mean, every, he probably has incoming from every direction, but he knows about that. I mean, somebody tweeted out a video of him talking about, you know, he was, he was talking about Bitcoin. He was talking about Ethereum. And he goes, and then that other uh, number three, I think it's called Ripple, he says. You know, it's, uh, it's used in banking rails and pay for payments. He says something like that. So he's aware of it. Um, but again, I still think that this is the best way to get to some sort of an understanding. It's not; it may not provide the clarity we want, but that's what we have Congress for. Congress could could simultaneously roll this out, but they they know they have to do it because you can't have seven eight years of not knowing, Jeff. It's getting a little silly, and we're looking silly as a, a country, old. a little old, you know. But I mean, we just proved that. Uh, so what if Ripple goes away tomorrow? There's you don't think other people are going to build there, and do stuff? There's perfect use cases, but hey, you know what? Yeah, the other other world leaders um, are understanding the significance of the digital asset crypto space. We can't help it that our guys here are just uh, a little bit clueless. You know, they're they're too worried about uh, open borders and and all those other uh, miraculous things Reg, that they Reg believe. Came, in. Reggie came so, up with a great nickname, <laughs> Gary Gangster. Gary Gangster, I like it. <laughs> We're going to refer from Gangster. here on out as Gary Gangster. I oh, like that, Reggie. Gary, Gary Gangster and the Crypto Enforcer. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That sounds like a band. You know what I mean? They're going to be playing there, you. I mean, uh, they'll do a digital concert. concert. I mean, it's all right. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love it. That's great. Yeah, that's some funny stuff. I, there's always someone in the chat that makes me laugh with something. That's good. Uh, yeah, we have Enforcement so, Mom. We have Gary Gangster. That's right. The Enforcer. The Enforcer. <laughs> She's the Enforcer. Um, so anyhow, if uh, you guys hung out here, um, if you've never been to On The Chain before, highly recommend you hit the subscribe button. Then hit the bell notifier because every time you hit that bell notification or every time we launch a new video, after you hit that bell notifier, you'll be notified of our videos as they launch. And what else? March 28th, the 2nd. On the chain, sponsored virtual meetup. This this coming Sunday, we'll start start dropping links on how you guys are going to register, and we're fired up about that one. And you know what? Tomorrow yeah, is another day because we stream Sunday through Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And tomorrow's Wednesday, XRP FOMO Day. FOMO Day, guys. We're going to get into FOMO. it. It's going to be another auction pack show. Thank you for coming tonight. Always appreciate your support, and we'll see you on the next one. Chip and Jeff out. We're out. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.